Hey, how are you doing? As you can see, this is me going to be talking about Blitzkrieg Commander rules. Uh, for those of you who've uh, watched some of my previous videos, I've actually talked about this before. Uh, different now because in the past I, d I did a lot of solo gaming, so my experiences of rules came from being a solo gamer. Now I've played with other people more since we set up the War Games Club over the last year, the ACVC War Games Fellowship in Glasgow. I'd love to see if you want to come along and see what we do Wednesday nights at the SEVC Hub in District City near Ibrox. Hunt down our Facebook page, drop me a message. But anyway, instead of being playing with other people, playing with other people is a different gaming experience. So I've not gone back and read uh, and watched what I did on the previous video, but I just thought I'd give you a, a wee snapshot of what I think about the rules now. So I mentioned them a couple of times with my 15 male flames of war. Uh, rules. I love the Battlefront miniatures. I've not had a chance to play the Flames of Raw rules set, um, but this has a lot of mechanics that I like, and I'm able to use those miniatures for it. In fact, at the back it says uh, suitable for any scale miniatures. And actually, the Battlefront Flames of War uh, starter sets are outrageous value. You know, you pick up like the Stalingrad and Kursk one, you've got all the infantry and all the uh, armor you're going to need. And obviously, if you want it's more specialist stuff, you can pick that up. But anyway, Pendraken. So, Pendraken's a company of we men, 10 millimeter scale models based up near where I'm originally from. Uh, they're based in Middlesbrough. Really nice people. And uh, they did release the third edition of Blissery Commander, but there are a few issues, so they redid the fourth edition. Um, oh, there's some uh, epic battles, what loop flags. Um, British. So, as you see, there's 57 pages of rules, and the rest of the book is about army lists. And there's a lot of army lists. And scenarios, actually, there's 15 scenarios there as well. The other thing I like about this book is you've got photos throughout the book, um, historical photos and pictures of games. So, this is an amalgamation of the sort of command and control of Warmaster, which evolved into the Black Powder set of rules and I think an Epic 40,000. Oh, I was oh, starting to rip my page there. That's uh, I might need to buy another copy of this. So, you know, unit abilities. Oh, come on. Actually, I'll pull out the stat sheet now. This is one of my photocopies to help me during the game. You're basically looking at uh, points value per element, type, movement values, centimeters, uh, AP. So, when you're shooting at infantry personnel, you've got one dice, 40 centimeter range. Anti tank. So they got one dice for 40 centimeter range for that one. That one doesn't have any. Close assault, how many hits you can take. You save. So a lot of things don't get saves. But obviously, your armor does. Limit. So this is for their army compositions. To be fair, that's a thing I'm, I'm most likely to ignore. And actually, notability. So any special rules I've got and when they were available for picking for armies. So pretty simple. Rules on terrain comes in first, visibility, seeing your targets, arcs, pre-game checklist, scheduling, artillery and air support. But let's skip to the initiative phase. So you can move by initiative if you're close enough to the enemy, but actually at the heart's command phase. So your command officer is going to issue an order. So they're going to say, right, uh, these three tanks, they're going to advance us one move. So they, they might be command eight, and you're going to apply some modifiers to that. So if you've used opportunity fire, uh, if you're too far away, um, other things like the terrain in the way. So let's say modify minus one. So I've command eight, minus one, seven. I'm going to roll two dice, need seven or less. Now I can roll a double six and get blunders, double one command bonus. So very similar to, say, black powder in that regard. However, you're only issuing one order. 
then you get a chance to issue a second order. So you're going to, um, so let's say we're seven. So my second order is going to be to move again. So it's minus one for the second order. So it becomes a six. So roll my two dice and I get six or less. Boom. Happy days. I got my order in. Then I can push it again and I can push it again and I can push it again until I fail. Command check. And then just like uh, black powder, don't get the issue any more orders with that commander. And that unit can't have any more orders issued to it from other um, command stands. Really simple. I really like that as a way to, to have friction. You don't quite know what you're going to be able to do, how far you're going to push it. And who knows, sometimes those uh, cheeky wee rolls of a, a five or less, uh, they do come off. So it's uh, rules for reconnaissance and communications, uh, reconnoitering, uh, movement, as you'd expect, toward, and now firing. So what you're going to do is how many dice you're going to get. I say I've got two dice and apply some modifiers. So if you're with a close range, it's easy to hit. Uh, flanks and rears. Then I'm going to score hits, and that's going to be based on whether you're in the open or uh, in cover. So you can see there, so shooting at some tanks in the open, I'll be playing mainly in the desert, so it has been four, fives, or sixes to hit. Um, so I'm going to roll my dice, got two dice. I've got two hits. My next thing is just a simple looking at the save of the target I'm shooting at. So if I'm shooting at, let's say, some infantry they're not going to get a save unless they're dug in behind uh, like in buildings or in gun pits etc whereas a tank they're going to get a save based on their armor so i say my two hits have gone in against a, a tank with a uh, save of a four and we'll roll my dice four plus i've either saved it or not hits are built up over the turn if uh, successful hits are built up over the turn if i equal the unit that's getting shot at hits at the end of the turn that unit is destroyed one of the things i did in my first game was uh we were discounting the hits every time it went on so we got a lot of suppression and a lot of units falling back yeah so as you build up your hits you get suppressed and you might fall back so we got a lot of suppression falling back we weren't getting lots of kills um so obviously you can get in close assault pretty pretty similar simple Dice rolls, fours, fives, or sixes, same thing, open, light cover, heavy cover, extra dice based on what's going in, outcomes, then you've got different weapon fire, air support, always good to see, and it can all go horribly wrong, uh, engineering, and end phase, I think I also might skip past some artillery there, and the scenarios go into detail Flank deployment, airborne assault, amphibious deployment, reserves, ambushes, uh, field defences you can buy as well. Um, like I say, 15 scenarios. I mean, we've only played a couple of basic scenarios. Um, running a campaign. And theatre of operations, it has pretty much every theatre from World War II. And if Bear with, I'll go through the different armies. Uh, oh, actually, that's a good point. Armies have tactical doctrine, which determines how far away they can be for initiative and some rules for receiving orders and command values. Loads of special abilities, really making uh, vehicles have their own unique feel. Oh, not just vehicles, infantry and stuff as well. So, for example, fanatics. Um, and here's a list of the army lists. So, as you see, it goes from America, Belgian, British, Chinese, Dutch, Finnish, French, German, Greek, Hungarian, Italian, Japanese, Far East, Norwegian, Polish, Romanian, Russian, Slovakian, Spanish, and Yugoslavian. So, pretty much... Uh, everything you'd need for World War Two, a very comprehensive book. Like I said, there's a Korean supplement and a Spanish Civil War supplement that I've picked up.
Um, I right, say so when I've been put my forces together, I've kind of at times ignored the limits. I'm just painting and building what I like. I'm not really going to do this competitively. Uh, my ethos for gaming these days is uh, yeah, who doesn't like winning? But ultimately, it's put some dice that uh, put some models down on the table, roll some dice, have some fun, and have a laugh while we're doing it. <laughs> So I'm going to have some more games of oh, working out army lists. Um, and that's working out how to, oh, some instructions for working with resin there. Um, anyway, um, nice set of rules. I really like it for 15 millimeter. It gives me the flexibility I want to build the armies that I want. It's a set of rules that feels uh, familiar to me, but also in terms of how the command works, the simplicity of shooting, but it also has a lot of elements in, such as artillery, aircraft, and special rules, if needed, that makes it feel like World War II conflict. Um, and the, the two or three games I've had of it so far, I've really enjoyed it. And I can see myself playing some of it uh, solo playing as well. Actually, just a point there for solo playing. The command values mean your forces won't do exactly what they want them to do. So there is that element of unpredictability that you might want in a solo game. Um, but anyway, I'm quite inspired now to, to, to finish my desert, desert project. It's closer than I think. And maybe do a couple of battle reports for this just to show you. But anyway, I'm starting the waffle now, which means it's time to finish the video. Hope you're having a great time with your hobby at the moment. If you've had any experience with Blitzkrieg Commander, please do share. And I look forward to chatting to you later. Goodbye.